Welcome everybody. My name is Dave Miller. I'm one of the technical specialists here at CNC Software Mastercam. And uh, thank you for joining us on our next edition of our Mastercam Dynamic Thinking webinar series. So today we are going to be talking about tolerances, the arc filters, and our smoothing settings. These are pretty good in-depth topics that uh, have been around for quite some time inside of Mastercam, but uh, it's not something that really everybody has a really great understanding of what's actually happening and why you should be setting the values that you're setting. So we're going to be talking about this page and focusing specifically on this page throughout the, this whole webinar today. Ask yourself as you're sitting here, do you know what you need to be setting these values to? You know, your total tolerance, your cut tolerance, that's those sliders for the percentage, you know, it might go into 50-50 arc filter to smoothing tolerances. You know, what do I use and when? And what is it even doing behind the scenes? A lot of these values really do affect, uh, you know, not only the finish on your, your actual finished product, but also how the machine is reacting. And, you know, in general, your entire cycle time. Um, a lot of different variables that come into play here. We are going to be focusing today really on how this applies to finishing toolpaths. Um, the reason why we're focusing on how it's applying to like a finished toolpath is because it's the easiest way that you're going to see directly see the, the variables. We're going to be talking about this case study throughout this entire uh, webinar. This case study we did uh, out of S7 heat treated steel. It's a pretty small little part, kind of using a precision high, you know, high end precision uh, die mold machine, kind of taking all the extra variables out of the mix. So we're using, you know, some high end tooling, high end uh, holders, work holding, and in general was also a perfectly clean solid model, no errors within the solid. So kind of setting ourselves up for best scenario. So we took our first stab at this part and, you know, just like most of you guys probably do, applied our first tool paths. Here we go, go and cut it, cut great, roughed out good, finished even ran great, sounded good. But I go look at the finished product and I get this, this tessellation, these, these triangles, these diamonds on top of the other diamonds. You can see this finish right in here. It's not looking so good, very faceted, and just in general, it's not, not a great surface finish, not a good RA. So this was, you know, just with straight up, you know, default settings in our toolpaths. So our default settings, if I was to, you know, talk back at that uh, arc filter tolerance page is a one thou tolerance, talking an inch here, sorry. Um, so a one thousandth of an inch tolerance with no arc filter, no line filter and no smoothing settings. And what you're gonna see is all this diamond pattern. So why do we get that diamond pattern? But yet if I go and you know really take the time and kind of refine those settings without changing step over, feed, speeds, any tooling, holding, work holding, you name it, without changing any other variables, I'm just working in parameters in the toolpath, I can clean that up and get a really nice looking part. You know, this one was significantly tighter tolerances, applied an arc, uh, a, a smoothing tolerance to it. But what is that all doing and why? Well, let's try to take this one step at a time. We're gonna really break down the actual options and what you can be inputting for the values. So if we were to take a look at this page, there's four main sections. You got the cut tolerance, it's gonna be our first section that we're gonna be kind of working through. And pretty really the cut tolerance is what's gonna drive everything. But then you have a line arc tolerance, a smoothing tolerance, and they all combine together to equal your total tolerance. Everybody always takes this page actually in reverse order and they worry about that total tolerance to start off when you really need to kind of treat each one of these independently with the actual tolerances for you know cut being separate than line arc, then separate than smoothing, and whatever they combine to, it kind of is what it is. But if you know what to set those 
individual tolerances to and you know why to even put those values in there it'll make a lot more sense so let's start off with the cut tolerance like i said the cut tolerance kind of drives the entire ship here if you don't have this set properly you could get some pretty undesirable results well tolerances in general you know we all deal with them on a day-to-day -day basis with um you know with all the parts that we work with but yeah you know, it's what are we doing with you know behind the scenes with with those tolerances well mastercam is tessellating every single model you know anything you're doing with a solid a surface model heck even you know 2d wireframe you know lines and arcs uh we're tessellating those models you know behind the scenes So I'm assuming, you know, a lot of people have worked with like an STL type of models, STL, you know, stereo lithography files. Um, it's kind of like the base framework of what we're kind of using in the background here. So if I was to basically convert this true solid model into an STL at, let's just say that default tolerance of a 1000 tolerance, this is basically the model that's being fed into the actual toolpath algorithm. You can see all those facets, all those triangles that are being populated into this model. Well, if that's what's being fed to the toolpath to calculate and compute a toolpath off of, well, then you're going to see those triangles happening, you know, come out in your finished product. It's kind of like the old saying, garbage in is garbage out. So how do we make this more or less garbage like? Well, it really comes down to starting to, to really reduce that tolerance. Reducing the tolerance is going to make more triangles. So here's our original 1000 tolerance, and you can see all how many triangles and facets there are. And they're pretty big and, you know, apparent triangles. Even just dropping this down to a, one, a ten thousandth of an inch tolerance, you can still see the, the triangles and facets, but still already right off the bat, a whole lot. Uh, it's more smooth of a, of a, you know, of a mesh and you know, more desirable results. Still, once again, the, the saying garbage in is garbage out. Every, all this really is going to be dependent on what is acceptable to you. I don't know what your, you know, requirements are for this part versus the one I'm doing. If I'm looking for something, a really darn good finish, a mirror finish, you might need to go tighter than a one, a one ten thousandth of an inch tolerance. So how do we go tighter? So this would be a pretty extreme case. This is 10 millionths of an inch. And the picture on the left, you know, that looks pretty darn good. Almost looks as good as my original picture of the true solid model. If I zoom that up and explode it into on the right side here, you can see that there still is those facets. There's still going to be triangles. There's always going to still be triangles. Even if you tighten this down even tighter than 10 millionths of an inch, there's still going to be triangles. It just kind of comes down to how small and how many triangles there really are. You know, that right there, I'm zoomed in so tight. You know, this trying this diamond right across is only uh, an eighth of an inch. So we're zoomed in significantly small there. Now, for us to even get into, you know, some of the, the extreme cases, do you want to make you aware that your system configuration file uh, is going to kind of prohibit you from doing that right off the bat? So this is actually in our config file, and the section that you need to modify is your system tolerance. By default, it's set to 50 millionths. And, you know, the software is still going on processing toolpaths and, you know, the, the actual code much tighter than 50 millions, but this is how tight we allow the user to go into a toolpath parameter and set a value. So if you want to allow the user to go tighter in, in any parameter, including a tolerance, you need to check that box and be able to change the value. So I normally just go and you know bump it out another two decimal places, and that'll suffice for anything that I'm kind of running with. So how does the the tolerance is applied to this part? You know, we 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 saw what it tessellates the model at, but what is that doing to the actual tool path? 
Well, here's our tessellation that we, you know, took from that STL or tessellating that in initial model into an STL. This is the actual NC code with the toolpath code from that model. Set still at that 1000 tolerance. You can see the actual green points are your actual endpoints of code. And, but right off the bat, you still see that entire tessellated triangle type of pattern in your code right off the bat. This is utilizing our you know uh, advanced display functionality where you can hide all the retracts and even turn on you know, your endpoints of code. And it's a really easy way to be able to showcase and show where and what you're going to get on your toolpaths. The other side that you will notice is these internal corner radii as it uh, one triangle, one diamond pattern meets another. It's pretty sharp. So not only are we not going to get the smooth toolpath across the entire, you know, big, large sweeping face of the, the diamond part here, but even our internal corner radii, if you actually take a smaller tool, you know, a half millimeter ball nose to, to finish this and get into those tight corner radii, you're not going to get a nice smooth corner radius in the, in the actual finished part because it's tessellating it way too tight. But once again, if we go and start tightening down that tolerance, we can start getting a uh, much bigger or better you know, type of results. So this is taking that same tool path, not change any step overs, any other parameters. The only thing we're changing is that, that cut tolerance. And this is down to the 10th, 10 thousandth of an inch cut tolerance. You can see once again, you know, the picture of what we tessellated the, the finished model at. And you'll once again see the type pattern that you will get in your endpoints of code. Without getting into, you know, the smoothing or the arc filters, you're going to still see that pattern. Now, the tighter you go with your tolerance, the tighter all that points are onto your actual finished part because the triangles are significantly less, uh, less small. So actually significantly more triangles as you go to tighter tolerance. But you could also see that in these corners, it's a lot more of a true radii that we're getting in between the diamond to diamond type of pattern. Instead of it, you know, being at the one thou where it kind of turned it almost into a sharp corner radii, now we actually get properly a you know somewhat of a sweeping you know arc in there so you know that's applying on a 3d model there's a ton of points here you know let's let's really simplify this down let's let's break it down to almost like a 2d slice of a toolpath and you know really can, can visualize a lot easier you know what, what's happening so we're just going to take this slice, just a spline. Imagine it's a slice of one of your 3D models, or even just a you know a spline that we're going to do a contour tool path. So we're going to chain this this spline. Well, chain that spline and then still apply a tolerance. So here's our 1,000 tolerance. Now, just like any other tolerance, um, you know it's on plus and minus side of it. So both directions. So your green geometry that you're seeing here is representing both ways that it can tessellate the model. The blue geometry is you know, your original drive input geometry. We're all very familiar with you know, tolerances on that aspect. Your blue always you know, is going to be a nominal aspect. We can't, in MasterCam, we do not allow you to set it you know, plus one, minus zero. Can't do that. It's always plus and minus you know, whatever your cut tolerance is. So now let's tessellate this. So we gave it a 1,000 tolerance and said, okay, I can tessellate this and create whatever points I need, but my path has to stay between those green lines. So my red is actually the tessellated path that the toolpath is gonna go and to traverse and cut this, this blue geometry. Well, as you can see, if with the very small amount of points, it's a direct path between them. Some of those red lines are coming pretty darn close to the upper or the lower side of my green tolerance. Still within it, still gonna cut it true to the value that, that uh, you're specifying. But you can see that like this arc right here, part of the blue, 
at that point, now it gets capped off at a pretty high, steeper, you know, line segment right there. So not being true to the actual shape, not being true to the initial intent of that drive geometry. If you tighten up that tolerance, you're going to get a lot more points. So taking that same type of path, only applying a cut tolerance. This is now at, let's just say, a one tenth, ten thousandth of an inch tolerance. And you can see significantly more points. And if I zoom into that upper arc section, you can see the red geometry is still deviating a little bit from it, but much tighter around that curve right there. To stay a lot tighter between those reds, those red uh, type of lines, the actual path that it's going to compute, you have to compute and add more actual and see points. The only way to get true, more true to the shape is to tighten up that cut tolerance. An arc filter, smoothing settings, and we're going to get into these, is going to modify those points, modify the input that is being created by the cut tolerance. The cut tolerance drives everything else. Okay, so we talked about cut tolerance. Well, how does the arc filter kind of fit into this? And when do you use this? You know, if we look at, you know, our roughing tool paths, you might use it a different way than you would a finishing tool path. Or if you're on a brand new Yazda die mold machine, it's gonna be very different than, you know, a machine from 20, 30 years ago. Every, there's so many different variables that come into play. So. What is the, tr the true value that you should be setting these to? That's a really tough kind of loaded question. But if we can apply these filters and see what our results are going to be and why they appear that way, you're going to get a better understanding when to set them. So this is that same exact cool path that we had originally uh, that we applied just the cut tolerance, the, the one thou cut tolerance. We still applied it as a 1,000 cut tolerance, but now we're giving it a 1,000 line arc tolerance in there. So that's going to go through and say, okay, here's my initial set of points that my cut tolerance is making. But now it's saying, okay, let's blend in and remove some of those points to blend in and put in arcs instead, G2s and 3s. Technically, yes, it can be a lot smoother type of motion because you're interpolating an arc instead of just line to line to line. But it's going to deviate from your actual model. And you can start to see it in some of these toolpaths where it almost becomes pass to pass. It's you know, deviating on the high side on one pass, deviating on the low side to another pass. It's not going to give you as accurate of results, as good of a finish on your actual part but it significantly reduced the amount of points I have here. So if I'm running a machine that's, you know, kind of choking on the amount of code that I'm giving it, this is one way to apply the arc filter, reduces the amount of points that are being fed into the actual uh, controller, might run a bit faster, depending on your age or controller and some smoothing settings that you have on there. Not trying to introduce any more variables, so we're going to disregard those, but it might run a little smoother on that side of it. But once again, speed versus accuracy. Can't have both. If you want to be accurate, it's going to be a lot of points, and you're going to go slower to go through all that. If you want to be less points, faster cycle time, you're going to deviate more from the model. So again, let's simplify this. Let's break this down to a 2D slice and see how we can really break this down in a more simplistic fashion. So this again was that original spline that we had created. And at this point, the red geometry and the brown points are the original uh, points that were created just from the cut tolerance. So this is still at that 1,000 cut tolerance. And you can see, once again, we get our pretty big facets in there. So now how does it apply an arc filter? Once it creates the, the initial points from my cut tolerance, however many points and whatever type of facets it's going to create, it then is going to apply whatever the align arc filter tolerance you're, you're, you told it. 
and it applies it based on the uh, the new geometry that created from the cut tolerance. So as tessellated as the cut tolerance formed it, it's going to apply that with the line arc tolerance. And you can see here, it's basically an offset pattern of the red geometry. And we're talking about the brown now. So it's saying, okay, I get this room to move in. I can blend in some arcs here to smooth this out, but now even you know with this, I, I have to stay within this tolerance. So it can start trying to blend this. And once again, you're gonna kind of deviate. Now these points originally were still dead on the actual uh, you know, drive geometry, these brown points. Now, as I blend in my actual arcs, my green geometry, you can see that those points can slightly shift on or off the actual red geometry. So you're changing where those points are. Once again, you can deviate from the model, not as accurate. Yes, you get the idea that it's a bit smoother, but you can see right here, it's just free flowing. And in some instances, it does become closer to the model. I know this red uh, faceted area was high on the model. If I look at, go back a few slides. So now we're closer right here, but my red geometry here, you know, it's, it, it's constantly changing it. So could you deviate more from your model? Absolutely. Could you be closer to your original model? Possibly, but it's still shifting these brown points off possibly off your model. So your endpoints of code are gonna be less accurate to your actual part. And there, right there, we have a side-by-side -side comparison of the green being your arc fitted path and your blue being your original drive geometry. Like I said, you could be a little bit more accurate, slightly comparatively to that wide open of a cut tolerance but this is only being more accurate and smoother because we left that cut tolerance so wide open. If we would have dropped that cut tolerance to the, the 10,000th of an inch and where it created so many more points, then the arc filter would still be smooth, smoother motion, but automatically a lot more accurate to, uh, to the actual path. So then how does the smoothing kind of apply? Well, the smoothing, once again, is to modify the points. It's there that we can soften some of the, uh, the transitions between those facets. It's there to kind of randomize the points where you don't get some as much of that geometric pattern of the endpoints of code in there. So this is a picture, once again, keeping the same exact cut tolerance, but now adding a smoothing tolerance. And we also have the option turned on to shift in the points randomly. And what you can see is it starts softening up some of those uh, facets on that geometric pattern facets on the actual, you know, uh, the actual tool path. And you can start seeing we also start adding extra points in there so that pattern, those facets don't, aren't as apparent on the finished product. So that'd be a one thou cut tolerance and a eight tenths, ten thousandths of an inch smoothing tolerance. And what that kind of equals is a one eight total tolerance. Once again, you kind of can't really look at, okay, I need this type of total tolerance. You gotta look at each one of those independently and the total tolerance just builds them all together. If you want to get these properly set, this total tolerance is kind of irrelevant. It kind of just is what it is. So again, we could take this and kind of break it down to a more simplistic type of approach. Again, here's our blue original drive geometry our red being the faceted type of pattern that we would get with the one thou cut tolerance, the brown points being the actual endpoints of code. But if we go and apply 
a smoothing tolerance. And once again, it works the same way that an arc filter tolerance does, where we go and compute the cut tolerance and then you know, all those points and path. And then it builds a tolerance for the smoothing off of that. So once again, it can say, hey, you got this whole room to move between those uh, brown lines. And what I can do is start smoothing out some of those motions. Once again, just trying to take the, the, the edge off those high points of, of the tessellations. So a couple big ones that we took off. Uh, you can see that this one in the middle here, right there offhand, it shifted down. It smoothed out the transition between those two facets by bringing that down, that point down a little bit. We took out one of the points here on the left. So instead of it going up end point of code right here, and then back down, we just took that point out and it's a direct line from point to point. Same thing on the left, all the way at the left. Took out one of the points just to smooth that motion out. Once again, though, anytime it's deviating and moving and shifting those points, you're going to be less accurate to your model. Those points, this point that was here on the red was originally dead on your actual drive geometry. Same thing with the points that it removed that were driving off the red. Now your toolpath can deviate more. So when you start applying these in different ways, it's really starts opening up what, what you can form with a tool path. You know, right here would be, you know, the path that actually ended up running on this part. Nice, smooth. You can see the actual endpoints of code right here. There's no geometric pattern being formed. Um, you know, the actual radii in these uh, corner of the diamonds. There's plenty of points in there. It's properly smoothly transitioning from one side of the radii to another and interpolating through. The point spacing, you're not dealing with any spots where it's, you know, big distance between points and then a cluster of a ton of points. Kind of just evens the whole playing field out across the board. In this one, we used a 30 millionths of an inch cut tolerance but then gave it a little room to smooth out the, the points. So we used a uh, 15 million smoothing tolerance. That equals a, you know, a 45 million total tolerance. Again, garbage in is garbage out. So that cut tolerance of being so tight really made for a really nice, smooth model that was being fed to the actual toolpath algorithm. Once it was smooth motion to the toolpath algorithm, we're able to kind of just take the, the high points of those facets, as small as those truly are at this point, and just smooth those even more without giving up too much extra wiggle room there. Now, where this could really get dangerous is if these filters and uh, the filter line arc tolerance, as well as the smoothing tolerance, if those were just significantly higher than your cut tolerance. At that point, you're saying, okay, well, here's tight, but then have this wiggle room to just move across the board. Um, and it's really not, you know, gonna give it a lot of good results. I do have some questions that have been populating in, but I kind of just had to get through the, the main bit right there. Um, so what is the difference between a total tolerance and a cut tolerance. Um, as we've gone through, you can see that the total tolerance is just a combination of the cut, smoothing, and the line arc tolerances. Um, those, like I said, the total tolerance, just treat it as this is gonna be a resulting factor of everything that you do set below. Truly set the cut tolerance. Don't worry about a ratio set the line arc tolerance or smoothing tolerance from there, the ratio just kind of falls as is as well. You know, if I said, okay, I want 30 million you know, to cut tolerance, so it tessellates the model at that tight of a tolerance, but then here, give this a little bit of room to remove those uh, kind of tight edges. What that ratio is there, that just fell into place of two thirds, one third. And that fell into place as a 45 million total tolerance. 
Another question is, so I've always been told to use the arc filter tolerance, but apparently it's not condu conducive to getting a good true part. So once again, it kind of depends on one, what type of machine you're running and controller and what you're trying to achieve. If you're looking for a fast program, you know, in less points because you're driving maybe a machine that's a little bit older that or don't have high speed smoothing options or um, anything of that nature. Yes, you're going to have to go towards an arc filter tolerance. But if I'm on a, you know, I'm, like I said, in this case, I kind of stacked the deck where I took and went the best, you know, high end, you know, type of equipment. So that way I'm not trying to, you know, use and cater to, you know, uh, other variables. Um, you know, the cut tolerance is really, you know, getting the most points right there and most true to that model is going to be the way to go. And truly, that's the same thing with the smoothing tolerance, you know, giving it the smoothing, a large smoothing uh, to reduce points or uh, to shift it around. You're once again, not going to get as good of a surface finish. Not going to be as accurate to your true part shape and intent. Um, what is the advantage of use presenting the arcs as line segments? Um, once again, kind of depends on your machine. Um, there are some machines that do not like to switch between G1 motion and G2s and 3s. And at that point, it can, we can use some of those options in there to force it to present all the arcs as line segments and it'll stay, even with smoothing it around, it'll present all those and stay in G1 motion. Uh, tolerance is support to the Z axis also uh, positive vector, negative vector. Yes, this is, you know, the, the breakdown simplify aspect that was a 2D quote unquote 2D contour type of tool path. Um, so at that point, the Z aspect was taken out of the mix, but when applying it on a 3D tool path or a five axis tool path like this off of a, you know, surfacing model or tool path, Yes, positive nectar or negative Z aspect is also in play. Can you talk about 3D arcs and should you create arcs in XZ, YZ, XY, and uh, Minmar arc, arc sizes? So, uh, good question. Again, that one kind of depends on your machine. One, does your machine even support arcs in the YZ, XZ, G18, G19 type of configurations? Um, there's some machines that still do not allow that. Um, should you create it? Well, if you're creating and doing an arc filter, could you create those? Absolutely. Um, but there's a lot of tool paths that just right off the bat by the nature of the style of motion that you just wouldn't see arcs in those other planes. So it kind of depends on your part geometry as well. If I was doing a raster tool path, um, along the cylinder kind of depends on when, if that cylinder is along X or along Y. And if you're going up and down that radius, yes, you could apply arcs in those X, Z, Y, Z planes, and it would create those. If you created them just in the X, Y, it wouldn't create those arcs. So all other machine variables aside, true best part shape is achieved with no arc filter or smoothing, correct. To get the most accurate motion, it's always to, based on your cut tolerance. You can kind of play the game where you can go less on the cut tolerance and apply a little bit on the smoothing just to take off those, those high points of those facets and that'll, that'll help, but still the tightening down that the cut tolerance is you know, ultimately, yes, the best way to achieve a more accurate part shape. Um, I saw Chris chimed in on the Akuma machines. Um, definitely, you know, feed it, you know, all, all the small points and lots of points, let the smoothing control on or smoothing factor on the control. In this case, Akuma, the super nerves, let it filter and handle and smooth out all the motion from there. It put all tolerance, then toolpath generation time increase or decrease. Uh, so if you're tightening these tolerance, yes, it will increase the generation time. 100% will increase the regeneration time. 
I've lost myself in my list of questions. Appreciate the question, guys. Keep keep bringing them out here. Appreciate this. Um, when to use the smoothing versus line arc? Um, really, I try to avoid line arc filtering as much as possible. Uh, the smoothing, I kind of almost always get into applying it because I can get away with a little bit less of a technically less tight, so a little bit more of a wide open cut tolerance and allow the smoothing to kind of just shave off some of the high points of those uh, facets. One way filtering, um, kind of keep it's, it's once again, kind of play the game. It would be the same as taking, uh, you know, the negative side of my tolerance here and re getting rid of it and saying, okay, you can only stay between the brown lines in this red line segment when trying to blend or shift those points around, blend arcs or shift the points around. Cycle time relationship to total, total cut tolerance, total cycle time relation to total cut tolerance. Um, I'll just repeat it, the same question. Okay. Um, yes, when you go and start inputting this much data, this many points into a CNC machine, yes, it's going to uh, slow down the machine. If it needs to and can be, it wants to be that much tighter and more accurate to all of these points and not blow through some of those points, it will slow down the cycle time. How much, that kind of depends on smoothing options as well as the machine control. Sometimes we get jerk motion, um, program generator mass cam, what would be the first step and really should look at. Uh, jerky motion um, kind of could be a couple things. You could be running a, a controller that cannot support really getting into this tight of uh, point density. You could also be getting run into situations where there's groups of points that are really, really tight together. So the machine slows down really uh, significantly for those groups of points. But then when it gets into a section where there's a lot more wide open, then it'll speed up. So if I was, if I back up to this point uh, type of graphic, so throughout this arc, I have a significant uh, increase in point density. A lot of points that it's got to actually hit to interpolate through. But then as I get through these arcs, I get these pretty big wide open sections. That inconsistent point density it could also really significantly show a jerk, quote unquote, jerky motion on the machine. When it's in the tight point density area, it's going to slow down. So it's actually going to be less than your 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 commanded feet per uh, in you know inch per or inch per tooth or whatever your your feet mode that you're in. Um, but then as it gets out of that tight point density, it could speed up to actually hit your uh, your proper feed rates. If it's not important to maintain accuracy, but surface finish is important, what are the ideal settings to use? Uh, that's a, a tough one, Todd. Um, once again, you know, it kind of depends on how tight you go here. Um, you know, tightening up that cut tolerance is going to generate a lot more points, but then applying that arc filter to smooth out the motion is going to give you quote unquote, a more smoother type of surface finish. Now, if this is a 2D type of tool path, this green line that we created with the arc filter is gonna stack on top of each other, uh, you know, vertically in Z. But if this was a 3D part like this, what you're really gonna deal with is actually a path to path tolerance issue where each one of these passes might be on, one might be on the high side, one might be on the low side. And the only way to solve that and is to tighten up those tolerances. Those pa with those path to path tolerances pretty being pretty wide open, that's where you're gonna get some finishes like in here where you kind of get these dips and almost looks like it's tearing in the actual tool path. It's because one path is high, one path is low. 
I'll put 3D Arc Entry Motion when to use this option. So our put 3D Arc Entry Motion would be uh, like a three-dimensional arc would be IJK XYZ type of arc. So a helical type of move. Um, our dynamic motion toolpaths, your entry arc and exit for our micro lifts would 100% apply to this. If you had this turned off, it would linearize that entire three-dimensional arc. Some machines don't support the helical type of motion. So first check into that if your machine supports this. Uh, roughing seems to like using the arc filters on the Akumas. Um, yeah, so the Opti toolpaths like, are any type of dynamic motion toolpaths. By default, those are geared towards generating everything as G1 motion. If you need it to reduce the amount of code or smooth uh, to, to allow the, the control to kind of run through that motion a lot quicker, yes, you can apply an arc filter. But once again, this is you know kind of dependent on what you're you're trying to drive because if I go and apply the arc filter by looking at this, let's say my blue geometry is what I'm trying to cut, and that's at let's just say a you know five percent radial engagement. My green geometry is the what it actually processed the the toolpath at. That could vary that that radial engagement depending on how loose you're setting these tolerances to. So if you're really trying to dial in those feeds and speeds and where you don't really have much on that threshold to push the tool a little bit higher of engagement, this you could see some issues with this. Uh, in other words, if customer is looking for ideal finish without having to do a lot of sanding and polishing. That was back to your other question, Todd, about ideal surfacing. Yep. Um, what values would you use for roughing? Um, if I go back to my main page here. Um, you know, roughing, if I'm leaving, let's just say 5,000 of stock, I definitely would not let either the cut tolerance or the total tolerance exceed even half of that uh that stock to leave factor um once you start applying you know what that cut tolerance is you can smooth it out a little bit with the arc filter reduce the amount of code that's coming out of our dynamic toolpaths like i've been saying um but i would definitely not let the cut tolerance exceed the half 50 percent of your uh stock to leave uh what should we do to get the arc fitted toolpath? Um, if you turn on the arc filter and then you can you know, have that as a tight tolerance that'll filter in what it can without deviating too much. Um, but once again, drive that more so from a tighter cut tolerance and then you can still play with the arc filter to reduce some of that code, but still within a less uh, motion, less area that it can deviate from the actual model. If you're truly needing arcs, that is. Uh, jerky motion, looking, look at smooth settings on your control. Yes, hide and hide using the cycle 32 motion or cycle 32 smoothing uh, commands to smooth out the, the motion and get, hopefully get less jerky uh, type of motion. Um, almost every machine these days has some sort of high speed look ahead commands, uh, whether it be a true option or something you can turn on and mess with different tolerances and parameters. Definitely look into those because that's all 100% affect how the machine's going to react with what we're giving it here. But all kind of stems from the native uh, data that you're giving coming out of Mastercam. Is there an option for reducing feed rate on the smoothing? arcs to reduce machine jerky like the there is on a regular contour toolpath uh no not in 3d toolpaths we don't have the ability to to reduce feed rates on internal and external arcs that's only on the 2d side um 
not sure why you would actually need to truly do that on the 3D. Um, really more so it comes down to, like I was saying about the point density, making it a more even point uh, density is gonna significantly help that jerky type of motion. Would you say that the arc filtering reduces the amount of points and smooth and optimizes their location? Uh, yes, to an extent, the, uh, the smoothing can uh, will optimize the motion. You can also utilize the smoothing to uh, actually create more points as well. Um, but it's more so breaking those initial points than rather than you know staying more accurate to your model. The ultimately, once again, the best option is to tighten that cut tolerance. Uh, if we tighten the cut, the, to the tolerance more, what is the toolpath generation speed? Um, I don't think I have any values of like, you know, set data of, you know, if you tighten it down to, you know, this value, it's doubling the regeneration time. Um, some of these sections of the, of our toolpath calculation are true multi-core processing. Um, in that case, you really have to look at your computer specs as well. Kuma has Helix as an option, which can cause an error if the option is not purchased. Correct. Yeah, a lot of machines truly do have the Helix or quote unquote 3D arc uh, type motion as an option. Um, before checking that box, I'll put arcs or 3D arc entry motion. Look at and see if your machine even supports that. So I am understanding this as cut tolerance should be 50 percent line arc and 25 should be 50% and 25% smoothing, 25% line arc. Would this be a starting point or am I wrong? Um, without looking at what machines you're you're actually trying to uh, pr provide code for as well as what your parts are, I can't really say that that'd be a great starting point. Um, I don't know if you need, or you're actually truly looking to reduce code or or just you know try to blend and deviate from the model. Um, if you're looking for, you know, great surface finish or great, more accurate type motion, it 100% driven from that cut tolerance. I normally don't really rely and look at the percentages. I'm just looking at what, how much distance am I really giving it to deviate, you know, between the cut tolerance, line arc, and smoothing. And then from there, it'll populate, you know, the, the, the percentages. What drives your decision to increase, decrease line arc Oops. tolerance versus the smoothing tolerance? Any uh, factors and how? Um, really, kind of driving by what you're what you're trying to program. That's you know going to be the ultimate driving factor here, guys. Is if I'm trying to you know rough my my toolpath uh, or do a rough toolpath. Yes, it's going to be excuse me, a different rule set than if I'm trying to do a semi-finish versus if I'm trying to do a finish toolpath. A roughing, I might not care for the most smoothest type of motion. I might just be trying to look at least amount of code to provide the NC, uh, the CNC machine. So I might go a little bit looser of a cut tolerance and then give it more of a filter just to reduce the amount of code based on what machine I'm trying to drive. But if I'm on a smooth, uh, you know, a uh semi-finish i might be able to get away with a pretty big cut tolerance but then just smooth out those high points of the facets by utilizing the smoothing tolerance but if i'm looking for doing a finished toolpath i might be looking at let's get a pretty darn good finish with least amount of you know facets happening on the actual part shape and most accurate there so i really need to cut tight tighten down that cut tolerance in that case i don't want those points to deviate much from the initial pattern so I'm going to keep those line arc tolerance or the smoothing tolerance really low, if at on at all. And depends on how, once again, your machine that you're driving. Yes, the tolerances are both uh, positive, negative side of your, your uh, drive geometry. How do you get it to display that screen where you show the actual toolpath factors and points and uh, how they change and what the different tolerance values? Blue green green points vector screen. So on your actual master cam screen, you have a advanced display option you can turn on right here. This is new in I believe 2019 master cam. Um, you can pull this down maybe 2020 
and you can pull this down and you can turn on or off different aspects of your toolpaths and I can even turn on endpoints. So I'll actually turn on my green endpoints here in my actual toolpath. And if I wanted to, I could open up the configuration and under subcategory of colors, advanced toolpath display, you can change the colors of each one of these uh, aspects of the toolpath, as well as I can go to like endpoints and I can actually increase the size of those points. So I can increase that and make it a little bit more apparent as well. Please explain what meaning of output 3D arc entry, kind of going over this already, but uh, the helical entry motion or support in the toolpaths. If your machine does not have those options, uh, please do not check that, that box. If your post is also set up correctly, it'll actually override and always force out line segments on a helical entry anyways. That's all I had for my presentation. Again, thank you all for coming.